Hey guys, it's Wendy with Fab Crafts and More and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I really, really appreciate all my subscribers for coming and hanging out with me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, we're going to do something kind of fun today and I'm going to just sort of jump into it so we don't waste any time. But if you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love to have you subscribe. I think the button's probably right down there. So let's get into this. This video today is about turning a aluminum can into some beautiful elements to use for mixed media, scrapbooking, card making, um, really a bunch of different kinds of crafts and so I saw somebody post about this I can't remember who it was I tried to go back and find them and I couldn't but I did see a bunch of other people who had done this before um, this is not a new technique okay people have been using aluminum cans for arts and crafts projects for years and years and years but um, I just kind of wanted to show you how easy it actually is. It starts out like this. We cut the tops off. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. And you end up with this strip. Okay, and a lot of questions I was seeing are, oh my gosh, if I tried to do that, I would end up in the emergency room. Or, you know, like, there's no way I could do that because I'm too clumsy. And asking about the sharp edges. It's thin metal that has been, you know, semi-jaggedly cut. Yes, it can be sharp, but it really isn't as sharp as I thought it was going to be. And you do need to be careful. So I would like to say, please do this at your own risk. Please be careful. Go slow and steady. Do not try to rush through this. Um, I do have just my glasses on. So um, you might want to wear safety goggles if you think you need to um, and also you know if you feel you're feeling really clumsy on the day you do this maybe you want do want to wear a glove I'm not going to wear a glove today um, but I am going to be very careful and I'm going to show you how I turned a can into a tag and then I'm going to show you some other options that don't involve um, the aluminum can that you might feel a little more comfortable with so let's get to it um, I, I ran this through my Sizzix Big Kit Embosser with just one of those plastic embossing folders. And then after I did that, I cut it out with a thinlet die cut. And I'll be showing you how to do that. So first thing you want to do is you want to have your tin can. It's empty. It's washed out. There might even be a little bit of water still left in here. So I might be um, dripping on here. Um, there are several ways you can cut this. Aluminum is very, very thin, and I am going to use this heavy duty cutter, but I'm also going to show you that you can use just a regular X Acto knife. And I, if you have like a pair of scissors that are really cruddy that you don't care if they get dull, you can use those too, but they do tend to give you a little more um, rough edges when you're trying to get in there with the scissors. So I don't prefer the scissors, but you can also use scissors because aluminum is just really thin. In fact, let me just show you with the X-Acto knife how you can even just come in here and easily score this. And when you're using an X-Acto knife doing things like this, it's better to just go over it a few times than trying to push your way through it. Um, anyways, you can see I cut through that with the X-Acto knife. So I'm gonna set this aside. And what you wanna start out doing is you need to create a hole in order to place your cutting implement in. Um, on aluminum cans this flat part is the thinnest and once it starts to taper for the top and the bottom it gets a lot thicker so we want to stay 
it also when you're rolling it out if you go over the part where it's tapered you get um, like warping and it's hard so we really want to stay on the insides of these areas where it starts to taper okay otherwise it gets too hard to cut through and then it doesn't roll out very well so I'm gonna go ahead and take um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with my utility knife and carefully I'm just gonna stab it okay right like that so it is stabbed in there now this is where you want to be careful and you can just go a little bit at a time depending on the sharpness of your blade you may be able to continue like continuous cut like this or if your blade is a little duller you may have to just sort of like poke it in and out as you go around but like I said please please go slow and careful there is no reason to hurry you can see how easily it's going through I'm just going to take this exacto knife is not like actually that sharp either so the first time I did this I used my exacto knife and you can see oh my exacto knife blades getting loose how it goes right through once you start to get um, this off it does get a little flimsy and so you just want to make sure that you're being careful now this is where a pair of scissors could be helpful to get through this but I'm gonna go ahead and go to my utility knife and just get it in here you can and give it a good cut like so you can see I'm still a little damp in there because I just washed these out before I did the video and there you go okay so be careful because there are some sharp edges but again it's not as sharp as I thought it was going to be so you're a little bit safe now what I learned from cutting the first one is that now that you don't have any stability holding this it's a little bit harder to hold this and get a good cut so oh, I'm leaking everywhere so I have a Cricut and I use Cricut vinyl um, or Caesar vinyl and you can, this is one of the rolls that's really like you cannot this is not a paper towel roll you cannot bend these rolls <laughs> these things are so sturdy and I thought you know how could I use this to support while I'm cutting and I have this rag now I I have since found that this is a little thicker than what I would like it but I'm still going to carefully just sort of push this in and don't use a rag like that you care what happens to but see if I cut this it would work a little better I'm just going to really try to pull this tight. So it's as thin as I can get it. Um, there we go. Okay. So now this has a little more stability. Now I'm going to pull it away a little bit because I don't want to poke into it. But now I have something to hold on to. Now just be careful. If you think that this part is going to um, be problematic to hold you can fold your towel up a little bit and hold it like that okay and now we're just going to do the same thing now try to stay a little bit up from the edge like I said because this part right here is way thicker than this part so give a little stab and then just work your way around And then see, this just helps to hold it steady without the can collapsing in on itself. Now, this is something I haven't seen anybody else do in um, some of the videos I've watched. So I'm going to take credit for that. But I just want everybody to feel safe. 
and be safe. I hope everybody's being safe right now. Times are a little crazy. Okay, and then you can kind of maybe push that in a little bit. And I actually don't care if like this cuts into that. You can also bend it like that. Like I said, this aluminum is super thin. So now that we have the two ends off, can take this off and get the water out of the way. Now again, be careful. Yes, it's a little bit sharp, but it's not so sharp that it's just going to hurt you just touching it like that. So one of the things when I was, um, when I was doing my test run, it was with this can that had this cute little owl on it. And I when I cut the tag out, I wasn't even paying attention to what was on the back and it just happened to be on the very edge of my can. And so one side is the inside of the can, but the other side turned out to be this super cute little owl. So I was like, Hey, that was a great coincidence. Um, so if you want to have the, you know, picture or whatever that is on your can, then, you know, make sure you're cutting not through that picture. So I don't, I'm not going to use this part right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it up like this, hold it very carefully. Now, if you feel like this is going to be problematic, you can take some masking tape and put masking tape around the edge too, to, um, you know, just to be safe. And then you just want to be careful as you're cutting downward. I find that just poking it in and sliding it down. Works really great. Again, I'm telling you this stuff is super thin and you can just sort of slide your knife down to the end like so. And then voila, you have your can. Now, it's made to roll back up like that. And once you run it through the embossing folder, that's not going to be as much of an issue. But if you want to try to unroll it a little bit, carefully place it like so. And again, if you're really concerned about the edges, you can tape them off with some masking tape or duct tape or something if you want to, um, you know, make this a little bit safer. I do not recommend letting children do this. Okay. Um, adult supervision, adults doing this and helping this video isn't made for kids anyways. But, um, if you had decided you wanted to do something fun like that. So now we have our strip. Okay. I'm going to bring my, um, big kick over here and I'm going to show you how easy it is to run this through the embosser. Okay, so I have um, my Sizzix big kick here, but this will work on any um, embossing machine. Okay, so just follow your um, sandwiches. If you don't know what a sandwich is, embossing um, machines have these plates and there's different layers. This Sizzix has this big, huge plate um, that has some of the layers like all attached together. Other ones, the uh, plates are all separate. And what I mean by sandwich is as you, the way you put them together, they call that a sandwich. So for using um, an embossing folder on the Sizzix Big Kick or Big Shot, um, they're pretty much the same machine, I think, just sold in different places. Um, you go to, you take both um, one and two and open them up so that you're just working on um, the one platform there. And then you are going to have your two um, acrylic plates, okay? So what we want to do is depending on 
which side you want the embossing. So usually um, this is a Dries, um, I don't know if these are even sold anymore, but I have a whole bunch of them. But um, usually the, t the part that has the name on the top is like the top. And so I want my embossing to happen um, so that the designs are coming up. Now I know this is hard, sometimes hard to see, but these snowflakes are, are rising up on top of this and not being, not sunk down, if that makes any sense. And so that's what I want to do with this. So this is the top. I'm going to open it up. It is, it can be a little tricky to get it to stay flat or to get it to stay where you want to. So you can always use some tape to hold it down, but you just need to follow your, um, embossing machines, sandwich rules for paper. Okay. So because this aluminum is super thin, you don't need, um, you don't need to do anything special which is part of the reason why it's so cool. Um, it does flop around a little bit, so I'm gonna get in there. Okay, and then you literally just run it through. I was expecting to have to crank it a lot harder, but it really goes through just like cardstock. And then you can, you can run it back through if you want to, or you can just take it out the other end. I bring it through twice just because so this was just running it through the embosser like you would cardstock and then when you open it up your aluminum is embossed how cool is that <laughs> like super cool I think so if you had wanted the impression to be the way it is here where the flower is like depressed then you would have just to turn this over. In fact, I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put my top side in here and I'm just going to run it through just so you can see the difference. And we'll just, I don't know why I'm placing it so far. There we go. We'll just run it through. And I'll show you that you only just need to run it through once. So if you're in a time crunch, you don't have to run it through the other way. So it might be kind of hard to see on here, but now instead of the flower, the design being raised upward, it's impre it's, you know, in it. All right. So there's that. And you can see how now it's flattened out a little bit too. Okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and just do the same sort of thing that I did here and make a tag with it because that's just sort of easy to do right now. There are so many dies for these machines and most of them are all compatible with each other. So this is actually a Recollections die from Michaels. I'm pretty sure I probably got it at 60% off um, last year in, during a sale because that's just how I roll. Um, and so to use the thinlets, which these are like, um, I guess they're not thinlets because that's a trademark, but to use these um, compatible super thin dies on this Sizzix you go on platform two and then I know there is a new um, self-healing mat that I really want to get I think it's called magic magic mat or something but um, this is just the you can see it's all cut up from using it that means we've been having fun right and so now you just place your a, you know, place your aluminum down again. Now on this tag that I showed you, I did not plan this, although it ended up cutting out the owl. So if there is a spot 
where you would want, like this isn't a super awesome design, but if there was a spot, you would just wanna make sure that you were cutting it in the right direction. Now, something about cutting this is that, that I want to note, take note, is that when this is the cutting edge that has this little ridge on it, okay? These are not sharp. If you have not used die cuts before, they're not sharp, but it's the pressure of the machine that pushes and cuts things, okay? So if you want the plain side of your aluminum to be your front side, you want to place the cut ridges down. And what that does is it pushes the edge, and it's kind of hard to see here, but it pushes the edge down and like just a tiny little bit so that now it's not quite as sharp. I also took a little bit of sandpaper. I'll show you that too. Like this really, of course, if you like scraped your finger super hard across it, you could cut yourself, but not any more than a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. So you want to place your your rid the ridge of the die cut that does the cutting the blade it's not really blade but you want to place that down so that it pushes those edges over just a little bit so if you have trouble um, with your die staying in place I'm going to go ahead and do it right here because I'm going to do something else over here and actually just changing my mind all over the place you can use some washi tape or scotch tape to hold it down so it doesn't slide. And this is done a lot when you're doing die cuts anyways, even on paper. And so then you're just going to put it through your machine just like so. Now, if you are new to die cutting, when you put things through a die cutting machine, sometimes it makes a horrible cracking noise. And actually that one didn't do too bad but don't be alarmed that's normal and so now oh it even had a little piece that came off we take this out and like magic we now have an aluminum tag okay so it is even less sharp than when we cut this out. But what you can do if you are concerned about it is you can take, this is like 600, um, it's water, it's sandpaper that's used with water and it's like a 600 grit, but you can just gently take this on the edges if you have any sharp edges. And this will really like help to reduce that sharpness if you are still concerned about what's going on here. Okay. Voila. Okay. So I have another thing that I want to try here with you and I want to show you how you can make the, um, you know, like the graphic on the can look really cool. So I'm going to grab another die, an intricate die. Now I do not know where these dies came from. They were, um, they came all jumbled up either at Goodwill or a, um, an estate sale. And so I'm going to, like, I haven't even used them yet, but I knew I was going to have a chance someday to use it. And so when you get dies, if you've never had dies before, they are often connected together. And sorry to make you go through all that, but hey, if you've never done it before, then you just learned something. Again, the flat side is not the cutting side. This side that has the ridge is the cutting side. And I want to show you now how you can make something that just looks really cool with the graphics and colors that are on um, the can. And so this has red and green, so I thought that might be kind of fun for Christmas. I'm going to place it so that the die is getting all of those colors. 
and let's try it out. I just think this is so fun. I honestly don't know what I'm going to use these for. If you have awesome ideas about what to use these for, please say some, leave a comment um, and let me know what you would use these for. I'm just having fun making them is really what it boils down to. I thought that this wasn't going to work and I was like, okay, I've got to try this. And it's just exciting that it even works. Okay, so now what you want to, you want to just be careful here. This die. Oh. So they didn't all come out. Well, so this is normal for dies anyways. And it might even have been good to run this through again or place a piece of thin craft foam or paper underneath it but a lot of them are coming out and sometimes you just have to oh yeah and I don't even I don't know what brand this dye is so I don't know like what the quality of it is it could just be that the quality isn't as good as maybe some of the name brands. Hopefully this isn't a name brand one that somebody knows and I'm, I don't mean to put it down at all. But, so we're just gonna push these out. And this is normal too, they make um, little tools to punch out, even when you're working with paper, to punch out the intricate parts. Like so. And one thing, if we don't get these all out, one thing you can do once some of these bits have been um, taken out is you can line it back up, but they are coming out. But, so take a look at that. How cute is that? You don't really know, like you can't really tell that it was, you know, the Zevia. Check it out. And then this also comes with a little top, like the little um, ornament top. So you could do that and I don't know, use some like E6000 glue um, or you could just take like some twine and um, not twine, but a decorative ribbon and place it through. You can make a really, some actual cool Christmas ornaments out of these or these could also be glued to um, a card but that is just um, another option you want to be careful with these little pieces okay that's one thing working with the um, aluminum is that you do want to be careful with the extra pieces because you don't want those to fall all over the floor and have somebody step on a sharp piece. Now these really aren't very sharp. Once you cut these out, the edges really aren't, you know, like dangerously sharp. So, but like I said, you know, just like even a paper, you can get paper cuts. But how cool is that? I think that's super cool. So I saw somebody, I don't have any bird die cuts or um, like butterfly die cuts, but I saw somebody make some really pretty ones with um, hummingbird die cut and um, a butterfly die cut. So lots of possibilities. So now I kind of want to go into some options because there um, were some comments that I saw. People were very concerned about the safety of um, using the aluminum, okay? And I get it, I totally get it. Um, you know, you know your comfort level with working with sharp objects. So if you think you're gonna have issues, please, you know, do what you need to do to keep yourself safe. So here are some options. This right here is a roll of aluminum tape. You can find this at um, your local hardware store. I'll link down below. I'll find some and link down below. I had used this um, to create another project. I can link to that video too. Um, 
that was pretty fun making um, a ring light for those of you who are like iPhone picture junkies or, um, you know, like to do your own videos. But this is an adhesive tape. Of course, it's not going to come undone right now because I want it to. It's very, very sticky. Like this stuff is made to secure things for like air conditioning units or dryer vents. And it is designed to be very sticky. It is very sticky. But it is, you know, like just kind of just like tape. Super flexible, super easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece off. Again, you don't do not use your fabric scissors. <laughs> for cutting this because it will dull them very quickly. Um, so let's go ahead and get our embossing folder and it's the same thing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and place it up like this. You can kind of, you know, put it how you want it. Let's go like that. So I get a bunch of these flowers for this for the embossing folder I'm gonna flip it to the other platform we're gonna go like so and we're just gonna run it through now the only limitation with this is the width of the tape but there you have it and it's already adhesive backed so you could use this you know in a junk journal or on a card or anything really and any embossing folder you can you know put whatever you want on that there are so many there are so many different kinds of embossing folders literally hundreds um and so I finally found my um, die cut. I'm so bad at setting things down <laughs> and not knowing where I set them. So let's go ahead and um, cut this out for a fun tag. So we've flipped it back to the um, to the thinlet side because this is thinlet compatible. Most dies are compatible with all the die cutting machines. And I seem to have lost my tape, <laughs> which is also par for the course. So let me grab some tape. This is just washi tape, like literally just washi tape that I don't use. And it stays near my die cutting supplies. Well, that's where it's supposed to stay doesn't really stay there because none of my supplies stay where they're supposed to. I'll just show you. I can run it through one time and there is a tag. Okay so again super fun. You can this so this is tape so it's adhesive backed you could stick it on anything you wanted to. Please don't stick this on something you don't want ruined, okay? Because this tape is very, very sticky. But there's that. The other um, metallic solution um, that was suggested to me, and I was like, seriously, this is upcycling, recycling to its fullest, this is a chicken stock, um, what are these, Tetra Packs? Chicken stock, tomato soup, like anything liquid basically comes in these these days, right? Look at the inside. It's shiny. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of this. And this is basically like thick cardstock with, it's not as shiny as the aluminum 
and it's not as shiny as the tape, but it does give you a sort of metallic-y um, feel. So let's do it because I thought this was genius, especially for junk journals. And I'm just going to run it through in the opposite direction. Why not? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not because I have to change. Da, da, da. I have to change this to the embossing side. Um, this might take a little more muscle to run through only because that Tetra Pak is thicker. So like I said, it's like thick cardstock. <laughs> oh, my mat's moving around. And look at that. So the fun thing about these, I am new to using alcohol inks. I have not used alcohol inks, but metal and like these sort of surfaces are perfect for alcohol inks and um you can i'm going to take this and show you because on the aluminum where's our other aluminum tag this stays on ink works really well here it is and you know it's not going to work as amazing Oh, I know. Let's do this. This totally doesn't match, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway, just to show you. Here is this little snowflake um, clear rubber stamp. Let me get, I got a little bit of a, I mean, this stuff is metal, and so it does sometimes get some little kinks in it. But this stays on ink. You need to be careful when you're doing this. Um, not careful because it's dangerous, but um, just careful because it, it slides around a little bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and aim for that little center. And so you just want to be careful in holding it still. And you don't want to really press too hard where you're smashing it. See, it's kind of slidey. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, it's a little slidey, um, but there's that option. Okay, so I turned my camera off and went to go get something and thought I turned it back on and I was sitting here talking to myself um, for a long time and just realized that the video wasn't running. So one of the things I wanted to show you is that um, with the aluminum, or really, I think any um, of these materials, you can stamp with alcohol inks or color with alcohol markers on them. So um, this was stays on ink, but I sort of smudged it as I pushed down. It kind of gets slippery, so you really want to be careful. Um, but you can take, these are Copic markers, and they're an alcohol-based um, uh, ink inside and you can color on metal with these and it will stay when it dries it will stay so this I had already done and you can see it is not coming off once it dries and so you can you know decorate these really fun and that is one way that you can um, embellish those just a little bit. So that's a fun thing to do. So you can get yourself some alcohol markers. There's other alcohol markers, but you want it to be alcohol ink. Okay. Or, um, Ranger and Tim Holtz has a whole line of alcohol inks. I will be trying those out. I'm new to, um, alcohol inks that are in marker form. And so I'm going to be trying some finishes on these because you can take the aluminum and make it look aged or rusty um, and turn out really cool. So I will be doing um, some videos about that in the future. So one thing that I wanted to run through with the aluminum is I have some die cuts that are words. And so this set has love you, happy, and forever, and I've taken happy, and I did already cut it out, and I mentioned this earlier, different dies 
um, depending on what company makes them, can work better than others. And sometimes if you have a die that doesn't cut all the way through a material, you just need to add like an extra little piece of paper to it. So I'm going to run this piece of paper underneath it because I know that this die doesn't go all the way through the um, aluminum as much as I want it to. So I'm actually going to turn it around this way. And I want, I want it to be spelling the word on this side and not the um, decorative side. So I'm making sure that I've got it placed the right direction so that my word doesn't come out mirrored or backwards. And I've got that extra piece of paper under there. There we go. And I'm gonna run that through. Sorry, it shakes my table as I run this through. And I'm gonna run it back through in the other direction. And holding on to it. There we go. And that should cut all the way through. Let's go ahead and. And you can see I'm like, I'm being careful, but I'm not, you know, being scared about touching this aluminum. And you could even, no, you couldn't, never mind. I was going to say you could even cut around that. Sometimes shapes, you can use the, um, the negative as well as the positive. And so that little bit of paper actually kind of stuck into it, but it did help it cut all the way through. And then I grabbed my tweezers here. These are sharp tweezers. And so if you're having trouble with the little pieces coming out from the middle, just take something pokey and keep track of these little pokey pieces as you don't want them all over your floor. It would be a good idea to either do this right over the garbage can or over a piece of paper that you can um, then dump out and let's push this direction it does work I promise there we go and this is normal for die cuts anyways even with paper to have to poke these little pieces out sometimes so this one's really stuck let's just get in there try not to poke yourself all right well it worked on this one i was upside down and if by chance you have a piece that doesn't come all the way out you can actually line it up and run it through again so then you have these cool words i keep putting it upside down because this y sort of looks like that h but you can you know put these on a card and these edges are not sharp Okay, I mean, like I said, it's just kind of like paper. Yes, be careful. But you could definitely um, use this for a project and not worry about anybody, um, you know, hurting themselves on it. So the last thing that I wanted to show you, and it's just, it's the same but different, um, is that I bought this paper mailing tape at uh, the dollar store and this is really cool too so what I did was I took a piece of it and I put it on a piece of parchment paper because that aluminum tape has a backing but this doesn't have a backing and you don't want to just stick it onto your um, plates without a backing so parchment paper is um, really sort of slick and makes for a good backing this still stuck to it and I uh, die cut it 
and made a tag that also um, has a sticky back. So that I thought was fun too. And then this paper ta tag is easier to use with stamps. So let's get a different stamp here. Ink that up. Hold that down, give it a couple little pushes, take it off, and you have a fun adhesive tag. And you could do other, um, you know, little doodads on there. I didn't bring my green out, but you could, um, you know, here's some little holly berries. And then you could do a green, ooh, maybe the blue on that. Um, on this brown will look kind of green. You know, if you're a good artist, you can do something like that. Or with more stamps, um, you know, that have um, a border around them or distress with ink. Um, so yeah, super fun stuff. But the whole aluminum tin can thing sort of blew my mind a little bit. And um, I think I've talked plenty long and I think you have the idea about what you can do with these things. Um, let's look at our little ornament again. And I've been throwing things all over. This is the aluminum tape and we have our happy words. Yeah. Awesome. If you liked this video, even though I was blabbing. Um, oh, I also did this one before too. This is a little Tim Holtz um, die of a camera and I'm a photographer also. So I thought that was really cute. Um, but if you thought this idea was cool and you enjoyed my video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'm just going to remind you to maybe hit that subscribe button so that you um, can be part of the Fab Crafts and More family. Also, click the bell notification so you'll get notified when I upload more videos because I'm going to do some more stuff um, with this and alcohol dyes soon. It's almost Thanksgiving and I am thankful for you guys. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me and learning some new things and having fun. See you later. <laughs>